Well, hello, everybody. This is Douglas Allen Frazier, and we are moving forward as we decree a thing, as we see that the things that we are decreeing are to be established. We are planting things so that they might grow and come to pass. I'm going to try to make this short tonight. I'm getting ready to go to Mexico for a few days as we minister down there. And I hope if you are listening to this that you will be praying for us. We'll be in Mexico from the 28th to the 30th. And we have a great opportunity to see the release of some decrees in that area where we're going, some decrees that even we released last year when Diane and I were in the same area, and we believe that we established some things last year that we are going to see the fruit of this year, and we also believe that the things that we decree As we go on this year's trip, we will have planted new seeds that will come forth. There is a great anticipation. There's a great expectation. And we are going to see those things, as we decree them, established for the kingdom of God the presence of Holy Spirit, and the change and transformation of lives in the area that we're going to in Mexico. You know, I have been around long enough to know that when we start talking about decreeing a thing, that many people kind of get in this attitude, well, I can just call anything I want and God's going to give it to me. There's been some people that proclaim that. Some people will testify to it. But all things are to be done in a proper order. They're all to be done according to the Word of God and His instructions for looking at the things we desire to decree. If we look at Psalm 37, I believe it is, we're going to see these words proclaimed when it begins to talk about the desires of what God would have us to basically decree and how he wants to bless us. It says this in Verse 23, the steps of a man are established by the Lord, and he delights in his way. So if I can look at that and say, my steps are following after God, it is my desire to follow after him and my steps are established by God. In other words, I look at that and go back to what we had been looking at in the word established and to decree something, to have it established. I kind of take from this verse that God has decreed that the steps of man will be established by him. So God is making a decree, but he's establishing something that says, 
I will establish the steps of man. That is my desire. I am decreeing a thing. The steps of man will be established by me. And it goes on and says, and he delights in his way. So God is saying that he is capitalized. He delights. That means the Lord delights in the way that he had established for man. We need to follow that. We need to follow that. That God has given us a perfect way to follow. It is something he has decreed for us. Let's look at something else here. In Psalm 145, we find this. The Lord sustains all who fall and rises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in their due time. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord of righteousness in all his ways and kind in all his deeds. So he's saying then in verse 19, he will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. In other words, fear is to honor, glorify him, uplift God, and he will also hear their cry and he will save them. It's all connected to God's plan. In other words, he's looking after us. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. All of the things we need, because the desires of our heart should be upon what is the desire of God's heart For us, as he measures our steps, as he sets out his plan. So when we understand what God wants to bring into our life, it makes it easy for us to begin to to decree a thing that we can understand would come from the heart of God For us, for others, for our communities, for our family, for our nation, for the nations of the world. When we understand what God's desires are, the decrees that we make are going to be tied to what God's desires are for all people. Let's look a little bit farther. We go into the book of Proverbs now, and it says this in Proverbs chapter 10, I believe it is, and verse 24. Yes, here it is. What the wicked fears will come upon him. But the desire of the righteous will be granted. Let me say that again. But the desire of the righteous will be granted. And going back to Psalm 145 and verse 19, we see this. I turn quickly back there, 145 and verse 19.
Let's go back to verse 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and kind in all of his deeds. Verse 18, the Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. And verse 19, he will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He will also hear their cry and he will save them. In verse 21, my mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. You see, that is the words of those who can proclaim righteousness, the righteousness we have in Jesus Christ. So yeah, there are groups and there are those that like to say, well, that's the blab it and grab it. But God is saying, I'm going to give you the desires of your heart. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He will also hear their cry and he will save them. So God's plan for us, as we are growing and moving forward into our our understanding what it is to decree a thing, it is to see that the desires of God's heart are being communicated from Him in heaven down to earth so that it might come out of our mouth as we decree the things that God wants to see take place. This is our calling. This is those things that will separate us from those even in the body of Christ who will take the idea of prophetic words and turn them into ways that I'll say this, will tickle the ears of those who hear it. And there are many that come up and continually ask for those that have a prophetic voice that is accurate And for others who have a revelation from God on prophesying into the lives of others, they will constantly come and ask when what they really need to do is they need to be listening. They need to be listening to what God would say to them so that they might learn that when we honor God, when we lift Him up, we will receive His blessings. And I'm going to close out this episode with one of my favorite verses that comes out of the book of Malachi. Everybody gets nervous when they hear the book of Malachi because they think, oh, we're going to Malachi 3.10. He's going to be talking about sending money. No, I'm talking about Malachi and talking about the blessings that God wants to pour out into his life as we begin to decree blessings upon God. Whoa, now that should grab your attention. And we look here 
And we get the famous, will man rob God, yet you are robbing me, but you say, how have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. That's a whole nother, whole nother series of episodes. I just found an interesting example of that tonight. But anyway, let's go look at this. In the last few verses of the third chapter, we see this. In verse 14, You have said it is vain to serve God, and what profit is it that we have kept his charge, and that we have walked in the morning before the Lord of hosts? So now we call the arrogant blessed. Not only are the doers of wickedness built up, but they also test God and escape. But here we go. Then those who feared, this is in verse 16. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. And the Lord gave attention and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who esteem his name. Let's kind of give a little look at this from what we've been talking. Let's go and look at this from this standpoint. Then those who feared the Lord, in other words, honored and glorified God, spoke to one another, they decreed a thing, and the Lord gave attention and heard heard it. The Lord heard what was decreed. The Lord heard what was being spoken of about him. And then he says, they will be written in my book of remembrance. So if we are decreeing things in Jesus' name and for his sake and for the honor of God and for establishing his kingdom and for raising up people, those are going to be written in remembrance God is going to remember what we've said. And then the Lord says this in verse 17. They will be mine, says the Lord of hosts. On the day that I prepare my own possession and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. And in verse 18, so you will see again, distinguish between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. In our words, excuse me, in our words, in our decrees, We are serving God. That should be our heartbeat because that's God's heartbeat. He wants us to know. He wants us to say. He wants us to proclaim. He wants us to prophesy so that men and women and children might know who the true and living God is and what he has in store for them. So, Father, right now, I thank you for the blessings that you want to pour out. I thank you that as we decree a thing, that we do it because we are honoring you, because we are in fear of you, that we give you honor and glory. 
And this week, at this week, as we have established it, that people are decreeing what they are hearing from you, that they might bless you in their words, that they might send out a decree that establishes a new life for another person, that breaks down the doors and sets them free, that cuts off forms of bondage and sets people free and delivers them from the evil one. So God, we thank you right now that you have given us the right to decree a thing in Jesus' name, in his authority, in the power and the love of Almighty God. Let it be done. Let it be so. And we shall see it come to pass.